So this is topic 1.1, length and time. In the last session, uh, we have already discussed about how we can measure the length. We start with, this is just a quick uh, revision of the last session. We started with the fundamental or the basic quantities or the base quantities, which include length, mass, time, electric current, temperature, amount of substance and luminous intensity. But you have to learn first five of them. Then the der derived quantities, which are calculated by two or more measurements, such as volume, density, force, energy, and pressure. The prefixes, you have to learn these prefixes, like if tera 10 power 12, giga 10 power 9, mega 10 power 6, kilo 10 power 3, milli 10 power minus 3, micro 10 power minus 6, nano 10 power minus 9, and pico 10 power minus 12. And if we are carrying out or measuring the length, we can use a meter rule, we can use measuring tape, we can use a vernier caliper or a micrometer screw gauge. The most accurate one is a micrometer which can measure up to 0.01 millimeter. When you are using a ruler, so you should avoid a parallax error, you should always look perpendicular so that you can avoid a parallax error. Same thing, if you are using a micrometer, so the formula for micrometer that is main scale plus circular scale multiplied by 0 0.01 millimeter. That's a formula to get the micrometer value. So we need the main scale, this one is a main scale and this one is a circular scale. So main scale, like it is smallest value on the main scale is 0 0.5. So it's 0 0.5 millimeter, then 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, and 3.5. And the circular scale reading is a line which coincides with the main scale. That is a 41st. So this will be 3.5. And the circular scale is 41 multiplied by 0 0.01 millimeter. So when you solve, it will be 3.5 plus 0 0.41, which is equals to 3.91 millimeter. So this is how we use a micrometer, we place between the jaws, the object is placed between the jaws and we record, close the lever and measure the main scale and the circular scale reading. This is just a quick revision what we have discussed yesterday. Now how to measure a volume? The term volume means space occupied by the object that is refers to volume. So if we want to measure the volume. It depends on what object we are measuring. Like example, what is the state of the substance and whether it is having a regular or a definite shape or not. So example, if we want to measure the volume of a liquid. So what you can do, you can directly use a measuring cylinder to record the volume of the liquid. So how we use a measuring cylinder, like if this is a measuring cylinder, the calibrations are there in centimeter cube. And we can have different uh, maximum volume for a measuring cylinder depending on the size of a measuring cylinder we are using. Normally in the lab, what we use is about 100 cm cube, but it can vary. It is not fixed. We can have a large measuring cylinder or a small measuring cylinder. So if you want to measure the volume of the liquid, we simply pour the liquid into the measuring cylinder. And when we pour the liquid into a measuring cylinder, how we know the value of the number? So we use the meniscus. Meniscus here refers to curve. So for which meniscus we read for water, we always read the lower meniscus. Like the cur this is a curvature, what normally we see for water. So this is called lower meniscus. And that this one is called, known as the upper meniscus. So when we read, you always read the lower meniscus for water because most part of the water molecule is down. That's why we read the lower meniscus. So example, if these are the numbers, so this was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. So what is the volume of the liquid here, volume of the water? 
when we read the lower meniscus or the bottom meniscus so it is 50 cm cube so we simply add a liquid into a measuring cylinder and read the volume and when we are reading the volume we have to avoid a parallax error like if i'm reading from other side above or below so there will be a parallax error so these are not the right positions so we should always look perpendicular and which meniscus we should always look for we should look for lower meniscus or you can also say bottom meniscus both terms are used for meniscus here refers to the curve so which curve we read upper curve or lower curve so we read a lower curve when we are recording the volume of the bottle is it clear how to measure the volume of the liquid by using a measuring cylinder so directly pour the liquid into a measuring cylinder uh, look perpendicular to avoid a parallax error and always look for lower meniscus or bottom meniscus then if you have a regular solid the term regular solid means it is having a definite shape like example if you have a cuboid or you have a sphere or you have a cylinder So if we have a uh, cuboid, a sphere or a cylinder, so what we use, we use a certain formula. Like if it is a cuboid, then it will be length multiplied by width multiplied by height. If it is a sphere, then the formula for getting or finding the volume of sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube. And if it is a cylinder, then the formula is pi r square h. That These are the formulas which we use for definite or regular shape objects but if the object is not regular or it's an irregular solid like example you have a stone or a pebble which is not having a definite shape so what you can use if object is not having a definite shape then you can use a displacement method what is a displacement method in this displacement method we also use a measuring cylinder so first what we do we fill the measuring cylinder with liquid and we record the volume. That volume is called V1. So example, when we fill the measuring cylinder with liquid, the volume of the liquid or V1 is 30 cm cube. Then we transfer this solid into a measuring cylinder. So the volume will change. This is the final volume. The final volume is coming out example 40 cm cube. So how much is the change in the volume when we add a stone to it or a pebble? So when we add a stone or pebble, what is the change in the volume? That is the volume of the stone. So originally the volume of liquid is 30 and the volume of liquid and stone is 40. So the difference in the volume, which is 40 minus 30, will give us the volume of object that is equals to 10 cm cube. Is it clear? how we can use a measuring cylinder to measure the volume of irregular solid. So if it is a regular solid, a definite shape, then we use a formula. If it is irregular solid, in that case, we use a measuring cylinder. And if it's a liquid, we simply use a measuring cylinder and record the volume of the liquid directly. If you have any doubt or a question, you can use your mic or you can use a chat to state that. Any doubt till now?
same thing when we are using a measuring cylinder what precaution we should take we should always look perpendicular to avoid a parallax error so a is not the right position c is also not the right position b is the right position and when we look from position b we can avoid a parallax error and we always try to read from a side because the scale is not on the both sides it is on one side so if we want to avoid error we should always look from the side where the scale or the marking like example even if you are looking from other side so that is even you are looking perpendicular but you are not looking from the side where the markings are so that is not the right position so you should always look from a side because it does not have marking throughout only one position it is having marking so we should look from the side of the marking and look perpendicular or 90 degree to avoid a parallax error in the measurements so these are certain inaccuracies like the displacement method what are the inaccuracies parallax error is there the parallax error means the wrong position of i or the student did not look perpendicular from the meniscus of the liquid so that is also like he did not look perpendicular to the meniscus he, his eye line was there but he was not perpendicular to the meniscus as well so that's also wrong splashing during immersing the rock what happened like when you put the rock inside some of the water might come out splashing occurred so that will not be accurate this will leads to an error maybe air bubbles may be found in the rock so rock may have some trapped air so this will not be accurate it will be a volume of rock plus the volume of trapped air sometime when we use this method instead of directly putting the rock we tied the rock with a string so a measuring cylinder is filled with a liquid and when we lowered this rock we normally instead of directly putting the rock we use a string or a wire which can so the rock is tied with a string or a wire and then we lower the rock but what happened what might be the inaccuracy if we are using a thick string or a wire then it will not be accurate why it will not be accurate because in that case there is a volume of the string as well volume of the wire or a string that's why it will leads to an inaccurate result and the cylinder may not be sensitive what is the meaning of cylinder may not be sensitive like the marking of the cylinders have too much difference between them so if the marking of the cylinder may have too much difference for example you have here 10 is written then 20 is there then 30 but you don't have numbers in between 10 and 20 you don't have any number or marking between 20 and 30 you don't have any example marking between 30 and 40 so if for example if the level of the liquid is at this position so it will for you it will not be accurate why it will not be accurate because you think it is 35 another student might think that it is 36 another student might think it is 34 so there will be inaccuracy so we prefer to use more sensitive measuring cylinder what is the meaning of more sensitive measuring cylinder it means it will have greater gap between the marking as well as all the marking should be there like there should be 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so on so when all the numbers are there on the measuring cylinder it will be more sensitive so these are some possibilities which leads to inaccuracy in this experiment what are the precaution precaution means how we can improve the experimental accuracy or how we can avoid the certain things to get the uh, uh, accurate result so we should check the rock it means like the rock we can make it smooth or make it small we should use a thin string instead of using a thick string we should use a thin string we should look perpendicular to the scale we should look for meniscus like the bottom meniscus and we we should put the rock gently so actually 
the precautions are the thing which will minimize the error as you can see like example here it is written the first one parallax error so how you can avoid a parallax error by looking perpendicular the student did not look for meniscus so he should look for meniscus splashing during emerging uh, the rock so some of the liquid might come out when we add the rock so what we should do to avoid this we should put the rock gently the string is there which will have like a thick string is used so how we can avoid that so we should use a thin string shake the rock means like make it small or make it smooth or a regular shape so this one is matches because some air bubbles might found in the rock so how we can avoid those air bubbles or remove those air bubbles by shake the rock so that it will be small it is not able to trap any air bubbles is it clear the displacement method to find the volume of irregular solid by using a measuring cylinder? Is it clear to everyone? Any doubt about the inaccuracy and the precaution? Inaccuracy means the things which are not correct or which will result in error and precaution means the thing which we should do to avoid errors or inaccuracy in the experiment. Now we'll do some questions related to the topic which we have discussed yesterday as well as the today about the volume. But most of the topics, the questions will be related to uh, the yesterday lesson. And I want participation from everyone. And this time your answer should be visible to everyone. So the first question is, the diameter of a copper wire is thought to be approximately 0.3 millimeter, a very small value. Which instrument should be used to obtain the more accurate measurement of a diameter of wire? I want participation from everyone. Uh, instead of writing the option, yes, you can just mention A, B, C, or D. What about others, those who did not uh, answer it till now? Yes, so the correct answer is C. So why C is the right answer? Because if you remember the smallest value which micrometer can record, it can record very small value to 0 0.01 millimeter. A measuring tape or even a meter rule can measure from 0 0.1 centimeter or we can also say 1 millimeter. Same thing is for meter rule, meter scale 0 0.1 centimeter or one millimeter same is for ruler the scale which we use to draw the line on the notebook that is also 0 0.1 centimeter smallest or one millimeter so the most accurate one is micrometer which can measure about 0 0.01 millimeter so c was a right answer another question the diagram shows a height of stack of identical coins so there are identical coins. One coin is placed on the other. What is the thickness of one coin? Don't bother about the right or the wrong answer and you can take your time. Like you can take about one minute for each MCQ or a bit more than that.
The question is, yeah, I will tell the right answer, but I'm just waiting for others to participate as well. And don't bother about the wrong answer. Maybe your answer is wrong, but that's not an issue because this is not exam. This is a practice to check your understanding level related to topic. So when we check the answer, what is the right answer? The right answer is B. But why B is the right answer? Because what you have to do, you have to check the number of the coins first. They're asking for one coin. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So these are the twelve coins. So twelve coins having a height or a thickness of two point four. But we need for one. So it will be two point four divided by twelve. So when 2.4, but that will give answer in centimeter because 2.4 is a height for or thickness for 12 coins. So when it is 2.4 divided by 12, this will give you answer as 0 0.2 centimeter. Is there any option 0 0.2 centimeter? We don't find any option as 0 0.2 centimeter. But when we convert this centimeter into millimeter to convert centimeter into millimeter, we multiply by 10. So 0 0.2 multiplied by 10, what I will get? I will get 2 millimeter. That is why B is the right answer. Is it clear? Is it clear to everyone? Okay, another question. Which instrument is used to measure accurately the diameter of a thin metal wire? So there's a metal wire and we want to measure its diameter. Which one is the most accurate instrument or a practice? A 30 centimeter ruler, a measuring tape, a measure, meter rule, and a micrometer screw gauge. So again, the most accurate one to measure the value as we discussed yesterday that micrometer is the most accurate apparatus to measure the length of the object. That's why D is the right answer. So the correct answer is D for that person. Which row shows the best choice measuring an instrument to obtain the accurate value of distance shown? If you want to measure a diameter of a wire, height of the bench, and the length of the lab, what could be the best separators used for? can take your time but everyone should participate and don't bother about the I will give you a hint like diameter of a wire will be very small so we need a very accurate instrument height of a bench height of the table or height of the bench and length of the lab Len length of a lab a meter rule maximum meter rule can measure one meter So when we compare the right answer, the right answer is D. Why right answer is D? Because diameter of a wire is very small. So we need a very accurate apparatus. So we need a micrometer. Micrometer, so either C will be answer or D. But height of the bench, height of the bench is like about meter. 
so we can use a because meter rule means maximum it can measure one meter and length of the lab it is like length of a lab or length of a loop uh, it's any room it is sev several meters so if it is several meters what we need a, we need a measuring tape measuring tape the only difference between a meter rule and a measuring tape both have the same accuracy but measuring tape can measure a length more than one meter but meter rule can only measure a length of maximum one meter that is why d is the right answer is it clear but the ruler yeah if you are using your ruler if it was written only ruler that is not that is about 15 centimeter or some 20 centimeter or maximum 30 but when we say meter rule this meter rule means maximum it can measure one meter the ruler which you are using that is simple ruler but if it is a meter rule it means it can maximum measure one meter Next question, the diagram shows a rectangular metal sheet close to two rulers. What is the area of this metal sheet? Area is length multiplied by width. Take your time for calculation and when you have a physics class physics session you should have a calculator next to you because uh, there are questions examples which are mostly related to calculation so what could be the right answer for this the correct answer is a but why the correct answer is a because if you check this one is five because zero then for one line is there then 10 so it means between them it is half this will be 15 20 and 25 so what is the length of this side so it is starting from 5 and ending at 25 so it means this is 20 and what about this one it is it is starting from 10 and ending at 45 so 10 10 minus 45 so this is 35 so length of this side is 35 if you need an area area is length multiplied by width so it will be 20 multiplied by 35 so when you multiply them what you will get you will get 700 centimeter square that's why a was a right answer for this question Another question, a student has a measuring cylinder containing water and also has a balance, balance is to measure the mass, which of these could use, she, she used to find the volume of a small, a small metal sphere, she has no other apparatus. She is having a measuring cylinder which contains water and she is having a balance, how she can measure the volume.
so the options are either matching cylinder containing water or balance means either one of them can use matching cylinder only balance only neither matching cylinder nor balance yeah what could be the right answer if you want to measure the volume of a small a small metal sphere so the right answer or the correct answer is b why b is the right answer because balance the purpose of the balance is to measure the mass so even it's a regular object and if we don't have because if we have a sphere so what we can do if we need a volume of sphere so the formula to get the volume of sphere volume is equals to 4 by 3 pi r cube that is the formula for volume of sphere but we don't have a we, we cannot measure the radius or diameter because we don't have any other uh, ruler or a micrometer to measure the diameter or the radius so we cannot use the formula then what else we can use we can use a displacement method what happened in a displacement method we'll take a measuring cylinder and we will fill this measuring cylinder with liquid and we will add the sphere so when we add this sphere so the volume of the liquid will change so as the volume of the liquid will change this volume was v1 this volume is v2 so the difference in the volume which is v2 minus v1 will give us the volume of the sphere so this can also be done if we don't have uh, an apparatus which is required to measure radius or diameter or height so we can use this measuring cylinder to get the volume of small sphere so the correct answer for this one is b Another question, the diagram shows a solid rectangular side block. The diagram too shows the same block from front and from side. A meter rule have been shown close to the edges. What is the volume of the block? Volume is length into width into height. Yeah, what about others? So when you check the answer, the correct answer is B. Why B is the correct answer? Because the volume is equals to length, width, and height. This is a front face. This is a front face. So it is starting from one and ending at five. So this is four. Then this is starting from four and ending at 11. So this is seven. And the side, it is starting from 5 and ending at 21, so it is 6. So length, or if this is 6, this will be 6 as well as this. So length, width and height, when we multiply them, 4 into 7 into 6, 
what we will get? We'll get 168 centimeter here. How the height is four? Because it is starting from one. When you check, it is starting from one and it is ending at five. So starting from one and ending at five. So this height is equals to four. Is it clear to everyone? I'll continue this discussion and share another link.